I welcome you all in this presentation related with the subject fundamentals of surface engineering and in this presentation we will be talking about the, the important surface properties and the general approaches which are used to modify the surface uh, properties. So, um, as we have talked in the previous presentation that there are two important aspects related with the surface features. One is the surface regularities which is, which is quantified in terms of the surface roughness and the second is about the subsurface zones. So, there are four or five subsurface zones. Uh, apart from that there are number of uh, uh, properties of the surface which govern the, the way by which material loss from the surface takes place which in turn affects the life of the component and especially under the trilogical conditions. So, these properties are like physical properties, chemical properties, mechanical properties and the dimensional properties. We have talked about the physical properties and in this presentation we will be talking about the three uh, properties uh, that is the chemical properties, mechanical properties and the dimensional properties and thereafter we will uh, uh, take up the, the general approaches which are used to modify the surface properties. So, um, first of all we will be taking up the chemical properties of the surfaces. So, uh, we know that all the uh, surfaces will be made of the uh, one or other kind of the metal system. So, chemical composition of the, uh, the metal of which component is made is of the great importance because it affects the microstructure of a given metal and microstructure in turn affects the mechanical properties and so sometimes even the corrosion properties uh, of the surfaces are also affected. So, what are the different constituents which are uh, there in uh, at the surface that will be governing the structural or metallurgical properties and so mechanical properties or the corrosion properties. Uh, chemical composition modification of the surface is one of the major category of the surface engineering where near surface layer uh, composition is modified as per the requirement so that the metallurgical features of the near surface layers can be adjusted to change the mechanical and trilogical properties of the component as per requirement like carburizing, nitriding, cyaniding, uh, boronizing, vanadizing are all these are examples where uh, the near surface layer composition is modified through the controlled use of the uh, modify uh, control use of these elements to modify the chemical composition of the near surface layers. Uh, another important aspect of the chemical uh, properties is the chemical affinity. We know that all the metals will have some kind of affinity with the other systems which may be of the like say metals or the non-metals or the gases. So, uh, we can say metal to metal uh, non-metals or the gases. So, uh, most of the time uh, like uh, uh, the gases which are present all around where the component is uh, uh, being used, uh, sometimes these uh, interact with the metals uh, uh, in a favorable way, but many times it does not happen so like the, the application of the metals like stainless steel whenever it interacts with the oxygen it forms very uh, thin layer of the chromium oxide. So, corrosion resistance of the stainless steel is improved thereby, but uh, like the uh, iron simply when interacts with the oxygen it forms the rust or the iron oxide and adversely affects it. Uh, the same is true for the aluminum and uh, oxygen interaction. Uh, so, these are the interactions sometimes these interactions are favorable and many times it is not favorable. Uh, and this kind of uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, whether it is uh, whether some kind of interaction or the affinity of the metal with the gases is favorable or not that also depends upon the quality or the characteristics of the 
oxides or the nitrides which are uh, being formed at the surface. Uh, for example, some of the oxides like uh, the, the oxides formed by mm, the chromium or uh, the aluminum, these oxides are very uh, can say coherent and adherent. So, they are, uh, they are non porous and they remain stick to the surface of the metal and thereby they, they offer uh, the good resistance to the further oxidation of the metals. But on the other hand metals of the iron whenever they oxide so they, it results in the porous uh, and non adherent, non adherent, non uh, coherent, non coherent oxides are formed. So, these uh, are easily removed. So, continuous formation of their oxides and removal also leads to the um, very fast rate of the material removal from the surface. So, uh, depending upon the kind of interaction or the ox um, interaction or the compounds which are being formed, uh, it may be favorable or it may be unfavorable. Uh, like uh, I have just said that um, the corrosion and oxidation both are um, the part of uh, the surface uh, uh, properties or surface characteristics the way by which surfaces respond to the surroundings in which the com particular component is being used. So, um, like some of the metals show very good resistance to the oxidation even at a higher temperature. So, um, nickel or the cobalt or the chromium based systems are effectively used for the high temperature applications um, because of the good uh, resistance to the oxidation. Similarly, some of the metals like uh, austenitic stainless steel or even martensitic stainless steel where our uh, good corrosion resistance is required such kind of the metals are used. So, all the metals do not interact in the same way to the surroundings depending upon their affinity to the surrounding uh, gases and the uh, environment uh, their resistance to the uh, material loss is uh, uh, influenced. So, uh, not just the um, not just the chemical composition effects, but the homogeneity of the chemical composition is also important. So, it is required that whatever alloying elements are present in a given metal that is present everywhere. It is so there is no segregation and if there is a segregation then it will be leading to the formation of the easy galvanic cell and which will be improving which will be adversely affecting the corrosion resistance. So, homogeneity of the chemical composition leading to the absence of the segregation or localized presence of the sum of the elements that will further improve the corrosion resistance or the resistance to the oxidation. So, not just the chemical composition, but the way by which the different alloying elements are distributed in a given metal system is also important. Otherwise, it will adversely, it will be adversely affecting the their resistance to the especially the corrosion or the oxidation. Coming to the uh, mechanical properties, there are very various mechanical properties which are of the great importance especially uh, for the wear under the adhesive, abrasive, erosive conditions. So, uh, we will be talking about the various uh, uh, properties like uh, the hardness. Hardness, uh, you, you know that hardness shows the resistance to the indentation or abrasion. In general, so uh, higher greater is the hardness greater will be the abrasion resistance that is very simple. But in addition to that uh, higher hardness also leads to the good adhesive wear resistance, good adhesive wear resistance and there is a famous Archer's law which uh, says that the volume of the material loss is inversely proportional to the hardness and this is for the adhesive wear conditions. Although it does not hold good in an entire range of the conditions, what is this very classical law uh, governing the uh, adhesive wear resistance of the of a given metal and which relates it uh, with the uh, hardness. Uh, so, hardness is, resist, uh, is defined as resistance to the indentation or the abrasion. Uh, so, metals having the higher hardness they will be resisting the indentation very effectively uh, as compared to those which will be having the lower hardness and that is why for the abrasive wear conditions normally the hard facing 
or the hard coatings hard coatings like tungsten carbide in the cobalt matrix are applied over the surface so that it can effectively offer the resistance to the abrasion uh, strength is important uh, especially uh, uh, for those conditions where um, where it is, uh, it is supposed to take the load. You see, if the surface has been modified by either um, uh, applying the coatings or through the uh, surface has been modified through the diffusion of the alloying elements, it must be hard enough so that it can take the service loads. And if it uh, does not take the service load, then the, there will be a lot of, uh, the, then the load will be transferred from the surface to the underlying metal and it may, um, it may lead to the formation of the uh, uh, like unevenness at the surface or uh, uh, localized surface layer deformation. Uh, similarly, the ductility is also important especially where the heavy um, the loads will be acting on to the component during the service. Uh, so, uh, since the ductility resists the, any, uh, resists the nucleation and growth of the crack effectively, so those metal systems where uh, there is a possibility of the surface layer deformation during the service and uh, formation of the uh, cracks, surface cracks, it is uh, uh, like, uh, then it is uh, good to have the reasonably good ductility so that it can resist the nucleation and growth of the crack, especially the conditions like surface fatigue conditions where a combination of the good strength and ductility will effectively be checking the nucleation and the growth of a crack. Uh, fracture toughness is also important because it shows the resistance to the crack growth. So, surface fatigue or uh, the fretting wear or uh, uh, fretting wear or the erosive wear or cavitation wear wherever, wherever there is a continuous impact due to the um, bu bursting of the bubbles or impact of the particles uh, leading to the um, uh, near surface layer deformation development of the cracks and their uh, subsequent growth leading to the removal of the material from the surface. So, under those conditions strength, ductility, fracture toughness uh, properties will be playing a, a, a big role. Uh, in resisting the uh, loss of the material from the surface. The bond strength is especially important for the coatings. Uh, as a accepted international practice, whenever a substrate is, um, is modified through the application of the coatings, so the coatings must bond with the substrate effectively with the required strength and this strength uh, uh, issue must be greater than the 70 MPa, otherwise there will be tendency for peeling of or spalling of the uh, of the coating from the uh, substrate. So, means our purpose of surface modification will be defeated if the coating is removed from the surface. Uh, residual stress uh, is another aspect uh, like uh, if the surface layers are heated and then cooled, then sometimes these lead to the development of the tensile residual stresses. So, those processes where very localized heating at the surface followed by rapid cooling um, takes place under those conditions, surfaces are under the uh, tension while the subsurface regions will be under the compression. So, such kind of the residual stresses, um, presence of tensile residual stresses especially uh, leads to the increased tendency of the crack nucleation and their growth. So, uh, the failure of the component may be premature if the tensile residual stresses are present and therefore, sometimes surface modification is intentionally carried out in order to have the residual compressive stresses at the surface. So, the application of the surface modification approach like uh, short pinning onto the surface will be leading to the localized surface layer deformation plastically as well as surface surface zone will be subject to the plastic deformation and this in turn uh, leads to the development of the compressive residual stresses. So, development of the residual compressive stresses improves the fatigue resistance, improves the wear resistance of the component and improves the tensile load carrying capacity of the component. So, setting up of the residual 
compressive stresses through surface modification is another favorable aspect which is commonly achieved in the processes like carburizing, short peening, carburizing, even nitriding helps in developing such kind of the residual compressive stresses which help in improving the uh, mechanical performance of the component as well as improves the resistance to the loss of material from the functional surfaces especially under the adhesive and abrasive wear conditions. Then uh, uh, residual, uh, then the stress corrosion cracking, uh, stress corrosion cracking occurs uh, uh, under the condition of the corrosion media. Uh, means the metal system is sensitive to the corrosion and the corrosion medium and the tensile stresses. Uh, so, uh, the, the, the metal sensitive to the corrosion media and tensile stresses in presence of these two effects the metal system show very um, uh, uh, faster growth of the cracks. So, first the cracks are nucleated in the zone of the higher um, stress concentration and once these cracks uh, are uh, uh, nucleated then they will be growing at a much faster rate and such kind of conditions lead to the much uh, 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 very premature failure of the component under the stress corrosion cracking. Uh, conditions. So, um, development of the residual compressive stresses helps in reducing the uh, tendency of the stress corrosion cracking. Now, uh, we will be uh, taking of the dimensional properties and uh, try, we will try to relate it with the um, uh, resistance to the wear. Uh, like straightness, flatness are important to have the smooth movement of the component uh, during the service. Uh, similarly, the roundness of the component, these are the surface properties or dimensional properties of the component which are uh, made by the various manufacturing process and then they are characterized to see what kind of the straightness, flatness and the roundness is present in the component which has been made probably. The two most important properties that affect the way by which material loss which will be taking place is the surface roughness that is the RA and the, the surface area. So, as far as surface roughness is concerned, uh, so uh, in general greater is the surface roughness higher will be the wear rate especially under the abrasion and adhesion conditions. Uh, why? Because uh, especially under the uh, adhesion conditions when these peaks and valleys are very deep. So, the uh, under the adhesive wear conditions very easy joint bonds between the peaks and valleys are formed which under the relative movement conditions um, easily lead to the removal of the lot of material from the functional surfaces. Similarly, under the abrasive wear conditions if uh, the if uh, uh, like one metal which is very hard and it is interacting with somewhat smoother material which is soft. So, one is soft and another is hard. So, hard metal when interacts hard metal having the higher uh, surface roughness when interacts with the softer metal. So, these peaks uh, which are present in the hard metal they will be indenting the soft metal and under the relative uh, uh, under the relative movement conditions between the two, uh, one scratch or these scratches or groups will be formed onto the softer surface and will be causing the lot of material removal by the abrasive wear mechanism. So, when uh, the surfaces are rough, especially hard surfaces, if they are rough, they will be abrading the soft surfaces very rapidly and will be causing the greater metal removal rate. Similarly, uh, the kind of relationship exists in like if uh, the surface area, since there, there are a lot of uh, uh, combinations there are there are a lot of possibilities as far as the properties are available pro properties which are to be consi considered for improving the uh, wear resistance so, say these are the physical properties mechanical properties chemical properties and the dimensional properties so uh, number of uh, 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 
properties are available in each of the category of uh, these properties. So, for a given combination, what kind of the physical mechan combination, what kind of combination of physical, mechanical, chemical, and dimensional properties which should have that will depend upon the application for which is being considered, like you now which kind of the thermal expansion coefficient, which kind of resistance to the thermal softening has to be there, what kind of the hardness is to be there, what kind of the uh, affinity of the gases now with the affinity to the gases is needed uh, and, uh, uh, and what kind of the surface roughness or the dimensions of the component are required. So, uh, the, there is a lot of variability or uh, difference in such kind of the combinations um, which can be chosen as per the application. So, what is important? What is important here? The application is very important. Like the component which is being considered for surface modification where it is being applied, where it is being used. Application is under the room temperature condition or high temperature or low temperature condition. It will be used under the ambient condition or in corrosion condition like petrochemical industry or any other condition. So, ambient condition or the corrosion condition. Similarly, uh, what kind of the load which will be acting? Load is like in form of uh, impact of the abrasives uh, like in uh, the hydro power turbines which will be experiencing the impact of the uh, uh, sand particle or slurry, uh, sand particles present with the slurry or um, impact of the, uh, the bursting bubbles during the uh, cavitation effect or uh, impact during the uh, excavation uh, of using the different ex excavators. Uh, so, the load and the kind of the medium across which it is coming like uh, uh, in the mining different kind of the abrasive mediums which will be there as compared to that where excavation is carried out uh, and then uh, the medium like as I have said the, the slurry is being used or uh, like cavitation where uh, particular kind of the fluid uh, is uh, flowing through the um, different kind of system. So, as per the um, as per the case means uh, where the component is to be used, what are the temperature conditions, ambient condition or corrosion conditions, load, medium across which the component will be coming. We need to identify the suitable combination of the properties, whether it is the hardness is important or the toughness is important or the high temperature. Uh, refractiveness or the high temperature resistance is needed or resistance to oxidation is needed. What is needed actually that will uh, that is to be identified. So, in light of the service conditions, uh, in light of the service conditions we need to zero down on the properties required. A list of that is made. So, what kind of the hardness or the toughness or the or thermal softening or, or, or resistance to thermal softening, resistance to oxidation, uh, the fracture toughness is needed, what kind of the percentage elongation or the ductility which will be needed. Uh, so, we need to prepare one list of the properties and accordingly we choose uh, the suitable material system to be used for surface modification or we will be uh, making the uh, modification in the uh, composition of the surface of the component which is being considered so that we are able to have such kind of the properties. So, what we consider application and the purpose for which component is, is to be used based on that we will be deducing the conditions of the service uh, and the properties required for effective performance of the component under those service conditions. So, this is the another important aspect based on the application and purpose uh, we will be trying to identify the, uh, the properties desired. Pro based on the properties required this will be guiding us either if we have to modify the material present at the surface uh, through the chemical changes or 
or another material will be brought in. For example, if this is the component, so just little bit modification of the composition will do the job or we need to put another kind of the material itself at the surface. So that kind of approach will be identified through the um, through the kind uh, through um, the identification of the properties which are being targeted. So the material is just composition or another material is to be brought in or no change in composition is needed or just little bit uh, alteration in the surface properties uh, or metallurgical properties of the composition will do the required job. Just like that, like this is the surface, we just apply the plastic, uh, we just apply the little bit um, external stresses so that surface layers get deformed and we have the required set of the properties. So, no chemical modification in this approach or what we do, we will just do the localized heating of the near surface layers so that the property modification at the surface takes place. But which approach is to be used that will be governed by the, the extent of change in properties needed because the base metal will have one hardness, one toughness, one thermal conductivity, one melting point and likewise and what kind of change is needed at the surface that will govern whether we need to have altogether different kind of material at the surface or little bit modification in chemical composition will do the job or we need to do just the little bit metallurgical changes through the uh, through the use of external force or through the use of heat. So, uh, now, as far as uh, uh, the, the fluid, fl uh, as far as the property requirement is concerned, that can vary significantly as per the application which is being considered. For example, for those uh, systems where fluid flow takes place, it is common to have the erosion. Depending upon the cleanliness of the fluid, we may have uh, just the erosion, uh, erosion due to the cavitation when there is no um, uh, sand particles are present with the fluid and when the sand particles are present with the fluid which is flowing uh, like especially in hydro turbines um, then the uh, slurry erosion can take place. The many times the fluid causes the corrosion of the uh, component also with which it is interacting. So, accordingly we need to select suitable combination of the properties. So, for example, for uh, uh, a good combination of the toughness and hardness is needed to deal with the erosion which will be in involving the cavitation and the slurry erosion. And if the, if the corrosion is also involved then we need to select the material in such a way that it offers a good resistance to the corrosion as well. So, like uh, for those uh, systems uh, like those systems which are used fluid flow systems which are used in chemical industries or petrochemical industry where the component uh, or food processing industry where the components will be interacting with the, uh, the, with the chemicals they are uh, the, these are made of the stainless steel which offers somewhat better resistance to the corrosion as compared to the simple structural steel or the uh, common carbon or alloy steel. So, uh, the properties like the toughness, hardness, corrosion resistance and smoothness will be important for such systems where fluid flow takes place so that the, it can take care of the, the corrosion if it is taking place or the cavitation or the slurry erosion. So, the properties that we should have at the surface of a given component that will go, be governed by the application for which it is being developed. For example, if uh, in the heat exchanger if our target is to keep that the tubes are maintained within the safe temperature limit and it, it is not exposed to the too high temperature then tubes may be coated with a thermal barrier coatings in order to avoid any kind of the extensive use or sometimes uh, it may also be required to uh, conserve any kind of the heat loss from the system like I have given the example of the automobiles where inner surface of the cylinders may be coated with such kind of systems which will reduce the heat losses to the surrounding and thereby improve the thermal efficiency of the uh, of the system which is being considered. So, as per the case what we are looking for we want to 
improve the functionality and the performance of the component or we want to just control the travelogical performance in terms of the re reduced loss of the material from the functional surface surfaces so that it can uh, really perform for long. Now, I will summarize this presentation. In this presentation, I have talked about the importance of the chemical properties, mechanical properties and dimensional properties with regard to the travelogical aspects uh, and also I have talked little bit about the way by which materials should be selected for uh, the given uh, application so that the suitable surface modification can be done. Thank you for your attention.